Okay, hi everyone, JC here. I'm playing a friendly match against Acid Jib, who is one of the best Scrolls players in the world, aren't you, sir? How are you? <laughs> That's a very grand entrance. I'm, I'm good. Cool, um, cool. Thanks for having me. <laughs> That's all right. Sorry, I just almost forgot to press end turn for a second there. That's always gets me from time to time. Yeah, I, so, think, I think everyone forgets that. So is this your main deck that I'm playing against? Yep. Okay, so I won't expect to win. I'm, I'm scared because I do bad against growth. That's something I've been having trouble with. It is, it is quite tough against growth when you're growth. Um, it's, it's tough because you can't scream, that other resource is overpowered because yeah, it's your resource. Yeah, no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you have more rares and stuff than me, though. Um... I don't know. You might have really bad rares. <laughs> if you have a thousand copies of Essence Feast, you might have more. Oh, no, but I mean in your deck. <laughs> I mean oh, in your yeah. deck, yeah. Um, um, so I'm just thinking at the same time as talking. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay. I'm going to get loads of comments. People going, why would you do that? <laughs> um so yeah, so you're playing Growth Mono as well as your main deck thing. Because I was start, I started out with Order at the mm -hmm. beginning of Beta because um, it was my impression um, from what I gathered during Alpha that Order was completely OP because I always used to play Growth during Alpha and always or, used to get destroyed by Order. Order was OP in Alpha. They but, nerfed it like... Yeah. The day before they wiped everyone's stuff. So it has no been, one really tested it. So it has been nerfed. And um, growth seems a bit more powerful now. Partly, in my opinion, because of Ancestral Totem, which I've just played on my side here. Yeah. Which that. now affects all of the creatures rather than just one row. Mm. So is it your impression that growth is the best side as well? Best resource? or? I don't know. I feel like... I feel like there's counters in everything for everything. Yeah. People are at the moment people are saying that scrolls has become rock, paper, scissors with growth beating energy, energy beating order and order beating growth. Yeah. But I don't think that's the case because if energy gets enough thunder surges, growth melts. Yeah, thunder surge is horrible, isn't it? When you yeah. yes. <laughs> absolutely ghastly. And um what's the other one? Burn as well. Mm. People playing burn really gets me as well because it's so it seems really powerful. Um, oh, I'm not getting any creatures at the moment. This is great. Whew. Okay. Um, oh my god! You can have every structure known to man, though. Yeah. With structures inside of structures. Yep. Illthorn seed for the win. So uh, let's. What shall we talk about? What's What's your favourite card in growth then? Oh, my favourite scroll. Mm. In oh, scroll. <laughs> <laughs> no one. Scroll. No one yeah. Um, sorry. I really like the wildling, but it's not. It's not good enough to actually use. <laughs> yeah. Um. Is it interesting? I haven't really used wildling much. I mean, it was added later on, wasn't it, mm, in alpha? Yeah. And I never really got round to use. I think. In fact, I'm not even sure if I had one in alpha. I think I've got one now. Mm. Um, but what's your opinion on um, when you design decks because I don't know any, that much about deck design at all um, mm -hmm. do you tend to oh you took up my totem <laughs> um, do you tend to always have a stack of three for every card is it worth um, bothering with cards if you've only got a few of them if you um, don't have three well not everything needs to have three of. Like, I think God Hand, I only have two of. Yeah. I don't I don't want to draw that every single turn. But a lot of stuff, if you're putting it in, you probably want three because, I mean, why else are you putting it in? Yeah, yeah. So you do. So God, so is God, is that an intentional move then with God Hand to make it not as common or is that just because you've only got one? No, I do. I do specifically choose to only play two God Hands. Yeah. Because it's, it's really, you don't want it that often because, I mean, you've got Rallying like you just cast and Mangy Wolf if you're really playing Wolves. Yeah. It's, it's normally enough. Yeah, cool. 
Okay. Um, I'll just concentrate on the game for a second. Oh, then, hello, now, you're, oh, now you're playing Totem. <laughs> yeah, so I think I've got one god hand. Um, uh, but I've got a... I'm not sure what I've got of the other things, actually, off the top of my head. Mm. I think I've only actually got one totem card as well, which I'd much rather have three of that. I mean, I'd ideally like to have three of everything and then um, get rid of cards that maybe aren't quite so good. Um, so I notice you don't have a lot of structures. Is that by choice as well? Uh, yeah, it's really... I don't like Ilthorn. It's mm -hmm. one spiky is annoying, but I personally don't like it that much. It's not really that strong, is it? As but it's it only is. got the three health. Yeah, but it is denying me my Vitas and my um, Sister of the Fox is moving anywhere near that fight yeah. because it's just it's quite pointy. <laughs> yeah, I do like. I think I've always played quite defensively generally, anyway. Mm. Um, so it kind of feels natural to me to use them but i don't know if it's maybe like the best tactic really overall they are they're definitely doing something but um i personally i think eternal statue and ancestral totem are the only structures i'd play maybe the it depends if i'm going to start trying to heal a lot of my stuff i put in the druid barrel grounds and the vitality wells but i don't think i'd ever have more than that in a growth deck i think growth you need to be punching everything in the face <laughs> Yeah, it's quite an aggressive deck, isn't it? So, mm. Yeah, I'm thinking of reducing the number of structures I have when I have... Um, when when I'm able to have three cards of the creatures I have so I can like fill yeah. the deck with creatures. I think at the moment I just simply don't have enough cards to have three of everything, so I kind of have to fill the deck with something. Yeah. So I generally go for... Um, I generally go for the... Uh, for the st structures. I'm just deciding what to do again. <laughs> um, you can tell when someone's thinking about what they're doing because their words get longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. oh, that's not very friendly. Okay. They're certainly annoying, though, the structures. <laughs> I'll give them that. Yeah, I think I lose out on aggression a little bit, though. Hmm. Uh, yeah. And, like, at the beginning of this game in particular, I just kept on ha kept on drawing structures and <laughs> yeah. didn't, have any, uh, didn't have any mobs. I mean, I guess I could counter that slightly by having... Um, by having the... I've forgotten what it's called. Um, oh, wait a minute, what am I doing? Ah. Oh, I'm making the stupidest moves. Okay. No! At least that's something good. <laughs> Get rid of your ah. one of your wolves there. I was so looking forward to that attacking with Leeching Ring on it, because it would have healed up to full from hitting so many things. <laughs> I think Leeching Ring is one of the cards I don't have. Um, mm -hmm. I should have left my uh, text file. <laughs> I only. I think... Oh no, I, I can't actually change the screen size while in a match. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, I, I only just started running Leeching Ring because it perfectly counters Spiky. Ah, oh, that's a good point. So when it, it deals damage, it heals by that much damage. Yeah, because I noticed. Was it? Um, it's not Manji Wolf, is it? Manji Wolf. If there's one of the wolves. Um, is it one of the wolves? Does that automatically? Yeah, it is Mangy Wolf. Force creatures. Oh, yeah, it's at the top of the description. Yeah. Deals one damage. Yeah. Yeah, so I know it's Mangy Wolf. I've, and I think it was, you know, not me doing it by mistake, but my opponent doing it. Um, <laughs> which is usually the greatest way to learn something because you remember <laughs> when you get messed up by something. But. Um, yeah, someone I was playing, I suddenly realised, oh, wait a minute, they're taking out the ill thorns with mangy wolves because, yeah, yeah, they don't, they heal back when they get hurt. Um, 
really want to get rid of that totem. Um, <laughs> Wolf brethren. Yeah. Defend so, it with your lives. So as we're on the subject of growth, um, is there any like cards in growth that you particularly don't like? Like I think, was it you who said that you really don't like um, Kinfolk Brave? <clears throat> he says playing it. <laughs> it may have been me. <laughs> I, yeah, I did say that. I got, I just felt it died too quick. But then I realised yeah. quite how important it is for controlling orders, like turn one and two creatures. Mm. And also dealing with other people's Kinfo Braves. Right, so you change your mind about it. Have then, a bit, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> He's, I still think he's too fragile, but I think that he is kind of necessary for those early games. Yeah, I find I find he's a pain. I think I've actually taken him, taken them out of my deck, and I think that was due to you, your advice. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll put it back in now. But um, I think um, the problem I have with them is. It was when I used to play with them and also a lot of power rings, which I think I've also removed power rings from this deck yeah. now. Um, but I'd have Kinfolk Brave, and I'd like it's very tempting to like make them really powerful because they attack so often. Mm -hmm. And then, but I stick power rings on them, but they still only have two health, and I'd be hiding them behind my all my. Um, structures as as you can see I always have loads of structures yeah. and um, but then I'd be playing like energy and they would just um, you know burn him or zap him or whatever and and um, in fact Kabonk is yes <laughs> um, what what you call it isn't it uh, <sighs> yeah <laughs> that's the other one poison. range Spain gets it as well um, spiky units kill it in one yeah Kabonk is a uh, order. That's what I was, what I was yeah. looking for. Yeah. So all sides kind of have ways of getting rid of him quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but if he's left unchecked, people learn to add removal pretty darn quick. Yeah. Yeah. Is that ten two Kimfo Brave? <laughs> GG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's so. I was I was finding a lot of that before um, I finally gave up. But then it kind of. Um, Oh, you're really starting to overpower me now, which is not going to last much longer now. Um, what's your opinion on Essence Feast, by the way? Oh, Essence Feast. Uh, you remember when it was... Before they tried to buff Essence Feast, when it was just the healing, it didn't do the double damage. Right, yeah. Yeah, we used to just laugh at Essence Feast. Yeah, I never liked uh, it back then. But now just, I have a bunch of them, mm, just in uh, case... I don't know. I feel like with the double, yeah. It's a. I feel like you, when you want to be doing big hits, you want to be hitting away creatures, and yes. it doesn't deal double damage to creatures. It yeah. only deals double damage to idols. So really, what it's used for is that moment when you think, right, I've lost all of that, but if I can do enough damage to that idol, I can win. And you throw like a desperate wolf out there. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. I don't think it does enough to make it a like last second survival scroll mm. I think it needs more um, I think I can win <laughs> oh yeah let's see any questions uh, <laughs> before I oh well we can, we can chat a bit more <laughs> we can do other stuff I'm, I'm going to go shopping yeah. after this uh, oh that's that's habit oh, oh <laughs> I see I was, I was counting what you had already I was thinking yeah. how are you going to win I for, oh yes of course I also have rallying it. and crimson ball in my hands I don't hands, think so my god hands up. even turned up Oh my god! Ha my god hand turned up at the beginning of the game, and then I, uh, I had to, you know, I couldn't play it. Yeah, I said I'd go over the top as well. So yeah, <laughs> yep. good stuff. <laughs> when you sacrifice scrolls, do they come back afterwards? Oh uh, yeah, the way the, game? the way it works is um, whenever a scroll either leaves the board or leaves your hand like a spell, it goes into a pseudo graveyard. Right. And yeah. Once you go to draw, and there's nothing there. You grab your graveyard, graveyard. and right. then that's when you get played. So like and it would be in a real game like Magic the Gathering or something, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, I think they want to add some sort of visual indication as to when the reshuffle is about to happen so you know when all those three things you cast are coming back. That would be really cool, yeah. Mm. 
and that would make it clear as well because I've had a few people even ask while playing them and stuff like say oh do we get our cards back you know like I don't know actually um, yeah. once once they add a visual indication of but yeah how much is left in your deck you could get scrolls that are like if you have less than 10 scrolls in your deck it gains plus 2 plus 2 or something and so you only have a couple of turns where it's really powerful before everything reshuffles and it goes back to whatever it was before. Mm. But they need to add that visual indication first. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Couple of questions. So, yeah, like most powerful side, are you of the opinion it's growth at the moment as well? Or are you of the opinion, what you were saying about the um, rock, paper, scissors idea that a lot of people seem to think it is? Uh, well... I think that people have found the most powerful stuff in growth now. Yeah. Like, people have got powerful decks for growth. I think people still need to make the powerful energy decks and maybe finish tweaking the powerful order decks before they hit that. Because I think they are all going to be equally powerful, but yeah. growth has gotten their fastest. <laughs> yeah. People, the, the, there's some... So you think there's possibilities that there's some really cool combinations and stuff in the other decks that are... Yeah, people just haven't realised the tactic yet. Yeah, I think yeah. I think once I think give it I think once people stop following what has been done before, because um when the beta started everyone was looking to what was found in Alpha mm. to work out what to do. Yeah. And now that they've done that, people are starting to experiment a little bit more and I think soon we'll find these other tactics that we didn't find mm. back then. Like I've noticed people playing Vitality well because it has haste. And heals everything the moment it hits the board, right, and we never yeah, really did yeah. that. I've been I've been beaten once or twice by a couple of uh, dual resource decks as well. Yeah. Like, because <laughs> um, usually if I'm playing someone and then I suddenly realise they're dual resource, I think, oh, good, I'm going to win. <laughs> um, but yeah, one or two of them have actually like really surprised me. Um, I think one of them was a kind of. Um, a grave lock deck so with you know a uh, grave hawk and yeah. um, some growth stuff and i think they were just having like i think they just had two growth energy and it was more or less just for grave hawk but um it seemed pretty powerful i think they must have had a couple of low cost growth scrolls that were combining well but i can't mm. remember exactly and um my guess would be eye of eagle and dryadic power probably yeah I think the other one was Order... Uh, yeah, there's another one which was Order and Growth, which Ooh. they were using a lot of a lot of low-cost scrolls. So mm. they were, like, flooding the board with loads of low-cost Order and Growth <laughs> and, um, you know, things like Kinfolk Jar, but with loads of Order... Yeah, just loads of little dudes. Soldiers, yeah. But So that was interesting. So I think mm. there's some kind of... There's all sorts of possibilities yeah. really yeah most most powerful what's it dual resource deck i think i've played mm. and i don't think i've played it yet in beta i think this is more of an an alpha deck was yeah the um the energy order one where you have destroyer and flip and transposition and stuff right so like wherever you put anything it's in destroyer range because they just go transposition swap two of their units and suddenly everything you have in that area is taking two damage Cool, cool. I have to look fun. into that. What was that one? Um, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, what was the most powerful deck in Alpha? And I, I'm presuming it's been nerfed now. <laughs> uh, the end of Alpha. Or yeah, the, well, um, the end. Let's say the end of Alpha. <laughs> okay, because there have been lots of most really yeah, powerful. Yeah, I, <laughs> I remember when dual resource decks used to be absolutely unstoppable with and you needed loads of totems, and then you'd be, like, um, calling back totems and replaying them and stuff, all sorts yeah. of crazy stuff. But, yeah, let's say most recently at the okay. end of Alpha. At the end of Alpha, it was Order. Yeah. Order was the most powerful, and then... That was when Imperial Resources cost six, and Royal Vanguard buffed everything on the board by one instead of just adjacent stuff. Oh, but right, okay. With the increase in... Imperial resources, it's made it harder for you to cast Imperial resources and then play stuff. Right. Which was what it used to do a lot of when it was in Alpha. And 
even with the Vanguard change, I think the Vanguard change has made too much difference. If anything, it's made the Vanguard just Yeah, because it's powerful. plus two now, isn't it? It's plus two to all adjacent. It's so everything adjacent, but it's plus two, which is, like, yes. really harsh. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. three of them around a skirmisher, and they all go off at the same time, and mm. I just cry for a little bit. <laughs> but the reason why the Imperial Resource thing used to be so powerful was because you could play Manganel on the board, then cast speed on the Manganel and hit an AoE for three. Yeah. which was really powerful it was like the only board wipe in order and you can still do it but because of the change to imperial resources it's harder for you to cast imperial resources draw the manganel and then play it with the speed oh sorry why is that just because it's more expensive just because that that one takes out multiples of three which really actually screws with it quite a bit right okay you could still do it but it'd be much harder and you'd be a lot later in doing it yeah yeah and um I guess finally, just um, how's your how's your collection of scrolls? Do you have all the scrolls oh. now? Uh, currently, you... yeah, you do. I have 134 growth scrolls, and I've I've made sure that everything I have is three or less. So Let's see what I have. Yeah. <laughs> 134 out of 145, isn't it? 100... I don't know actually. Wait. I know that there's. I've made a list of the names of the scrolls that I don't have a single one of. <laughs> But then yeah. I'm kind of trying to get those first and then concentrate on getting three of everything. Okay, well, how are you with maths? Because there's 45 scrolls in each of the resources. So there'll be 135. Oh, okay. So I'm yeah. one growth scroll off from having all of them. Right. Which one's that going to be? <laughs> it may actually be an essence feast. And then I've got... I've, seven I've, got, one. I've, oh. got, I've got three spare essence feasts to <laughs> trade. Ooh, okay, I may I may buy that from you at some point. Yeah. But I've got 71 energy scrolls and 87 order scrolls, so all of the energy and order stuff I have is almost entirely commons. Right, but you've been concentrating on growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if I, if I got a off-race um, rare or even some uncommons, I got rid of them so that I could put more money into my growth stuff. But now that I'm getting close to the end with growth, I'm going to start focusing on a different resource, and I think it might be energy. Yeah, that's a good idea, because I've been trying to collect them all at once, and um, I kind of I have over 100 of each, and the only I only keep... Every, every card, I don't keep more than three, um, unless they're rares. I've started keeping extra rares. For oh, yeah, trading. I've got spare So I've got, an, I've got one extra Kinfolk Jar, and... Three three essence feasts and one waking stones. So yeah. Spare. Yeah, spare. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um yeah, if you need an essence feast <laughs> maybe we could trade. <laughs> You're but a man I, to come to. I'd like I'd like to trade them like one for one for like rares that I need. So yeah. I still need fertile soil is like the um the one growth that I need. Um yeah. And I need Potion of Resistance and Speed and Shrine, and there's, then there's a handful of uncommons that I need as well, which hopefully I'll just eventually pick up. Oh, you and may actually looks... have more than me, because I, I, I don't have any like of the other races of rares. Yeah, and actually I do have a Wildling as well. Ooh. But you see, I've been I've been buying single scrolls, so maybe I've just got lucky because you tend to buy packs, don't you, for the guarantee? I've, I've only recently started swapping to packs. Mm. Before I I used to spend loads on them, and then I'm like, I just spent a grand and only got commons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I I'm the opposite. I quite I I tend to just buy a bunch of single scrolls after every match, and sometimes I'll just spend. Like, there's been quite a few times where, you know, so it's always like 300, 400 gold after a match. And mm -hmm. um, I've, there's been several occasions where I've got, like, two rares at once, <laughs> which is really fun. <laughs> I, remember that. I remember that in Alpha. I was like, right, there's been a reset and we're going to get started on buying all our scrolls. I did a couple of pre-com matches and rank matches and got, like, about 800 gold. And I was like, yeah. buy growth. And, and the order it went was um, God Hand... Fertile soil, God hand, God hand, quake. I was like, yes, yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, it took me uh, ages to do that. get quake this time in beta. Mm. I haven't and had also, it happen in beta. Yeah, and also, um, I guess finally we'll wrap it up in a moment. <laughs> yes. um, what's your opinion on the uh, 
on the specific like order scroll growth scroll like specific buys for 175 because i feel like it's not really worth the money and maybe it's worth it just for finishing off a collection or something but um otherwise have you ever bought those or when i started off i did i bought specifically just growth stuff because i wanted to get a lot of my growth collection good yeah or i even looked at the others and um now I think that if you're trying to finish off your collection, you're probably better off just buying random scrolls and then trading for yeah. what you need to yeah. finish it off. It's a good point, um, yeah. Once they tidy up that trading room a little bit. I saw a really cool idea where you could get, like, um, under your profile, you could have a trade binder. And you just fill that with all the stuff you want to trade. I'd really like that. Because mm. at the moment, I've actually got it written down in this text file, like... Ex, you know what extra cards I've got and what cards I need and everything, and it'd be <laughs> cool to actually have that in the game, kind of thing. So I don't have to do yeah. that. I'd I'd like it if it was a trade yeah. binder. You could just you could just drag stuff to or some kind of auction house. But that's like a big yeah. ask, really, isn't it? That would be a lot of work. But yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so and so finally, what's your just to finish off with, how's your how's your rank? What's your current rank? My current rank is actually quite bad. <laughs> I don't know. If, Are you I don't know how 100? many viewers? No. It moves so fast at the moment, doesn't yes. it? Yeah. A hundred and thirteen. I'm at the moment. Ah, oh, you're, you're almost back in there then. Yes. How's I, how's I old Blinky doing? Off. Blinky's Blinky. joint third at the moment. Yeah, he's gone to Amsterdam and his rank is slipping. He's still he's still third though. <laughs> Yeah. So, do, I, I think it, do you think it will even out over time, like the ranking? Like, mm. people will kind of get more solidified positions and then I think people I think, will really have to grind to try and get in there. I think the top 100 will... Well, no, the top 10 will continue to stretch out quite far. So we'll hit a point where position 1 is, like, maybe 200 rating away from position 2. But I mm. think... In the lower ends, like, some people are, like, rank 5,000. If they win a match, they'll jump up to, like, rank 400 or something. Right, yeah. I don't think that big cluster at the lower end will ever change. I don't think that will spread out. Yeah. Because there'll be so many people who join the game and then play a couple of matches and just don't don't get really hooked and won't come back to it later. And so they'll just fill up with these AFK accounts. Yeah. Yeah, I'd really like to eventually get into the top 100, so I'm kind of... Mm. Where are you at the moment? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Top <laughs> 1,000, at least. <laughs> uh, oh, can I check? Um, I haven't played for a few days as well, actually, really. I mean, for a couple of days, I was playing lots every day. Um, and I remember first, the first day I was playing in beta, I, was, I felt quite good because I like jumped up like 100 to 200 ranks or something in one day. And yeah. I thought, oh, if I can gain like 100, you know, up to like, I think I was up to like rank 300. And so the next day I thought, oh, I could maybe get up to rank 200 today. But then I kind of stayed where I was because loads, more and more people were joining the game and playing and everything. And and I feel sometimes even when I'm playing and winning, my if I keep on checking my rank, my, ja- my rank will go down just because <laughs> some people are winning even faster or something. Yeah, so. I, reckon, I reckon if you check, that will be happening a lot less now. Yeah. But those early couple of days, yeah, definitely. So the, my my general approach has been to I just started concentrating more more on collecting all the scrolls because mm. that felt more fun and just ignoring my rank until yeah. I have all all of the scrolls. <laughs> and then, Everyone. And then I can like mess about and try and find the best deck if I've got all the scrolls available, yeah. and then I can go straight to number one. So that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> it so, sounds genius yes so um so we'll wrap it up there so um thanks for coming and chatting and lending us your expert knowledge no problem thanks for having me no problem at all if you want to see um more of acid jibs informative scrolls videos uh your channel is it's um well youtube slash user slash acid jib 08 Oh, eight. Okay. If, you just, if you just search Asajib in YouTube. Oh, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be a link in the description for <laughs> yeah. on YouTube in this video for everyone to go and check it out as well. So, okay, so thanks for hanging out, dude, and I will see you later. 
See ya.